everyone. Welcome to another edition of Brief Tale for the Brief Talk podcast. We have someone a lot of fun who enjoys this singlet as much as I do on the show. Welcome, Mr. Brad. Hi there. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on here. I thought Brad would be awesome to have because I have actually drawn him a few times on if you and beat him, if you've seen some of the spandex, of course. There will be more of him, I'm sure, because he's fun to draw. So I thought he would be great because he has underwear, he has spandex, he has a little of everything, and it'd just be a fun conversation. So welcome. (laughs) Thank you. So tell our listeners a little bit about you if they don't know who you are. Uh, My name's Brad. Um, I come from the Washington, D.C. area. I uh, live just outside in Arlington, Virginia. And I am a music director. I do a lot of singing and playing. I'm a pianist uh, as well. Uh, In fact, that's what I uh, got my degree in. Uh, And I uh, do a lot of teaching in the area uh, as well. Nice. Uh, Yeah. I can't sing Carry a Tune in a Bucket. More power to you. As long as you enjoy music. I enjoy music, but they only sing in the car when I'm alone and by myself. Because, you know, I can hit those notes. No, I can't. But in the car, I can. I'm I'm wonderful in the car, as long as no one's with me. Or someone I date has to suffer with that. I've already determined. <laughs> Sorry, you got to take up with it. What made you first discover underwear in the first place? And then I'll also follow it up since we're doing talking spandex. What made you discover spandex? Well, I suppose I discovered underwear the same way a lot of, you know, other young gay guys did, you know, is during their middle school years that, you know, things start waking up and you start noticing things. And you're in the department store. We had like a belk in the town that I was living mm-hmm. in as a, a kid growing up. And, you know, you would go to the, the men's underwear department. You're like, oh, what, what's this? Why does this suddenly seem so interesting? And then I would just, you know, hang around there and... Never actually buy anything, not until, you know, later in high school, you know, when I had the ability mm-hmm. to um, <clears throat> grab something and then uh, purchase it and, you know, kind of hastily just walk outside uh, out of the, <laughs> the department stores like, oh, you know, like you're holding contraband or something under your arms. But I mean, that's kind of how it came across. Uh, I always, uh, as a kid, I always wore briefs and it just felt <laughs> super exciting and, and new just to yes. you know, look at the new designer stuff. Yes, I remember those days going to the to the mall, to the underwear section and go, ooh, 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 what's new? Yes. So how did your spandex journey begin? Because you wear a lot of spandex on your Instagram and I've drawn you in spandex, so it's only a natural. Um, I sure do wear a lot of spandex. I, out of curiosity in middle school, I joined the wrestling team uh, for one year. It, that, it was very short-lived. I, after a while, I knew I wasn't in it for the wrestling. (laughs) Um, I definitely enjoyed the feeling of wearing the singlets. We were the bears uh, in middle school. Oh, (laughs) nice. So we had these beautiful black and gold singlets with, you know, bears kind of diagonally um, slashed across the front of it. Uh, And it just felt so good. And I knew, I knew from the get go, it made me felt excited and good. Um, But after that, I didn't wear singlets for a good long time. I didn't really have access to singlets. Otherwise, uh, it's not until, you know, the age of the internet Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like, it's suddenly singlets galore, you know, going, um, going online and then now going to MAL or IML or all these different events that you can visit and just see gear abound. Yes, it sounds like you grew up the same time I did, where you didn't have internet, so you had to actually go to a store that sold singlets, which was usually some sort of sporting goods store, and you had to track them down. And I remember using, of all things, the Yellow Pages Mm -hmm. uh, to try and find stores in the area that sold them. So yes, and it wasn't until the internet where you can like, oh, I can buy it now, it's not a big deal, and Yes, I remember tracking them down, and it's like, where are these? I've got to have them. So, Absolutely. yes, <clears throat> pre-internet days. You young, you youngsters don't know about pre-internet days. Those days were fun. <laughs> it definitely made you appreciate uh, it a little bit more once you got your hands on something. <laughs> oh, yeah. It took work to get stuff back in the day because you had to actually go buy underwear in person. So most of I don't think any of the like Calvin Klein or any of the two exist at the time. 
were in catalogs at all. So you had to go to the store and buy them because we have so many people who are like, oh, I can't go to the store and buy what I want. I'm like, I don't care. I just go buy it. I've always done that. So whatever. So yeah, now you have to actually, now you can just push a button and it's delivered to your house. Yay. So do you remember the first good pair of underwear you bought? Um, I suppose throughout high school, I must have bought something on like like a church trip or something. Because every year we would go up to the big mall in the D.C. area. Uh, back then I lived in the mountains of Virginia. Uh, and in the big mall called Potomac Mills was up in northern Virginia near where D.C. is. And... I mean, it's just a gigantic mall, and inside there was a jockey store. Um, oh, so, wow. So, you know, that, they had, um, you know, like, like all the women's um, undergarments and everything, but then they also had, like, specifically good men's undergarments, um, things that were made of, um, so, like, some, some spandex and, you know, had, a uh, like, that 95% spandex or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, and it just it felt really good uh, on the hands. And then they also had things like uh, string bikinis and uh, bikini briefs and things like that. And, like, ooh, this is awesome. And then so um, I kind of <laughs> took some time while uh, in that store, looked around, and um, I guess I must have bought my first uh, pair of designer underwear, if you consider Jockey a designer. Yeah. Uh, and during that time on one of those trips and it's just like, Ooh, look what I got. And although I don't know, I'm going to wash it once I get home. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think every guy, when you buy your first good pair, you hide it. And then it's like, I got to wash it. I got to do this. I got to do my, cause we've had a couple of goes when I bought under good underwear, that's when I started washing my own clothes and people thought, oh, I'm being responsible. I was like, no, I just don't want you to find out about my underwear. And then when they find out, it's no big deal. It was like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. That was personally my story. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. Who cares? This was your big secret? <laughs> little, little did you know there's a bigger one coming. Um, yeah. Hang on, folks. That's just, This is just the warm-up. So, yeah. So, how did this first pair of jockey inspire or influence you going forward? Did you keep wearing bikinis, briefs? Did you venture into jock songs? Um, certainly, yeah. Um, I, I guess I've tried just about every single underwear that's out there. Um, I even tried boxers once. Never again. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> not going to do boxers anymore. You only need to try it once. Yeah, one time in high school, freshman year, it's like, no, no, I'm, I'm good. Here, here, I gave, it to, I gave them to my little brother. <laughs> I'm like, I'm done. Uh, but, yeah, definitely on bikini briefs. I uh, love how they just kind of sit around my hips and the string mm-hmm. bikinis. I remember, like, it was Hanes that had, like, the elastic band string bikinis. Yep. Um, connected by the cotton on the back and the front, um, but then uh, it all just became sort of like the uh, that that cotton um, s- string eventually. Um, and then uh, now I'm finding that I wear a lot of jocks, and particularly these days I wear a lot of thongs as well. But it, it, it's just once you get used to the thong, it's like it's great, it feels good, and uh, you can move around pretty well, uh, especially when you get a good quality thong. Oh yeah, you have to get a good one, and you have to pick. Pick the right thong for you because they're all made different. They all have different. Some people like a thicker back. Some people like a thinner back. Some people like the G string. Some so there's because when you talk thongs, people are like, oh, there's only really one kind. I'm like, oh no, there's many kinds of thongs, and you got to find the right one for you. Because mm-hmm. we've have, have our thong show, and that's what they say. If you try one and you don't like it, well, try some more. Don't just make a decision with just one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I've seen you at the gym in them. So you wear all sorts of things at the gym, Mm -hmm. which is awesome. You wear spandex to the gym, which is amazing, which more and more guys are doing. So do you remember the first time you wore spandex to the gym? And was it a big deal or was it more, I'm wearing this, who cares? Let's see. I guess it must have been just a couple of years ago that I really started wearing um, spandex openly to the gym, you know, occasionally it would be the tights, you know, under your clothes, just uh, the compression shorts and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I think like my first real singlet that I started wearing to the gym, I own many singlets before that, mind you, but, um, it would be, uh, the Jeffrey Scott singlet. Uh, if you know mm-hmm. the tights guy, uh, he yeah, yeah. 
yeah, a lot of really great singlets, and I had a, I still have it, I still wear it, uh, it's my black and white striped singlet. Oh, and, nice. Yeah, and it's just, uh, it goes down to about uh, half the thigh, and then, you know, mm-hmm. just uh, strings up and over the chest. Um, it gives me it gives me nipple, uh, nipple coverage, because uh, I, I, I do have a little modesty at the gym. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, but that was the first one that I started wearing. It was about a couple of years ago, probably 2018 or so. And then I just really liked that one. So I started ordering more from uh, Jeffrey and, you know, I've got um, got quite the collection from him now, uh, ranging from, you know, like uh, long blue and white striped tights and um, purple, black and white short tights um, and more singlets from him. And I, now I started ordering from LED Queens as well. I've got some singlets from them. Um, got a Nasty Pig singlet, a singlet that I like to wear. Got a couple of years ago. I think I got it during World Pride in New York City at uh, okay. 2018. Uh, and then also, uh, I've really been ordering a lot from Skin Fit Shop as well. They, um, yep. they, it's it's expensive. It takes a while to get to you because everything's custom made to order. But once it gets there, oh man, it is such a high quality hot product from Skin Fit. So I recommend all of these uh, these folks. Um, yes, the good thing about Skin Fit is you can customize it in any color you want, so you don't have to wait. Like, oh, there's only two colors of this. Nope, there's like 20 colors. You can mix, match, make your own. So that's one thing cool about them. And we have uh, Chris, who's been on the show before. He talked about going through them. He goes, I'm always now, I will like order with a bunch of people so we can split the shipping costs and split everything. And then we're good. We don't have to worry about just one person ordering and paying because they ship, I think they ship FedEx or something. It's mm-hmm. not cheap. And he goes, we'll just order like a huge one. And then it takes forever to get here, but it's so worth it. And everyone keeps going, where's my order? Where's my order? And it's like, chill. It takes a while, especially with the big order. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But usually because it takes a while, that's why you do the big order. Yeah, that's what he said. My questions are all off because I'm mixing spandex and underwear people. So you have to bear with me. So what's some of your favorite brands right now in underwear that you love? Well, who are you wearing more often? Most frequently, I find myself wearing JJ Malibu right now okay. um, because their thongs are just incredibly comfortable and the, the styles are so much fun to wear. Um, I've got like a gold glitter patterned one. That's just uh, not actually gold nice. glitter. <laughs> Don't want that up your butt, but, um, but a gold glitter no. pattern. Um, it's made out of spandex uh, and some, uh, some sort of synthetic material. Um, also, they have this pink and purple camouflage one that I really like to wear. Have a matching tank to go along with that uh, leopard print because everybody needs a leopard print something in their own underwear drawer. Well, there's a chores coming out with a new said leopard print and it's like pastel rainbow under it somewhere Interesting. i have to send you the picture after we get done all right it's coming in their new collection but it's like i saw this and it stopped me i'm like what is this and i must have one because it's a it's a swim brief but it's like oh my god i love this it's mm. like leopard unicorn oh my god oh yeah so, yeah oh, i'd like to see what that looks like um, but on top of that, I also have, uh, once again, skin fit, a couple of thongs that I ordered from them as well. They have this one called the bulge thong, and it shows everything really, really nicely up front. It kind of just lifts everything up and forward, and I, I love it. Well, hopefully it's called the bulge thong. It does exactly as it describes. Mm-hmm. I so can yeah. attest that to it that it does. Nice. Very nice. So let's talk singlets for a minute. That's, that's one of my favorite subjects. And I'm, everyone keeps telling me, I'm, you post too much singlet stuff on the site. I'm like, leave me alone. That's what I like. Go away. I post it when I want to. Go away. <laughs> it's like, I love them. I have an addiction. I know it. So what are, so do you like the, I call them like the competition cut, the higher cut one with the longer legs, or do you like the shorter ones? What's what's your favorite? Uh, my favorite, I suppose the, uh, about the, uh, the thigh length one that I was talking about earlier, that's okay. a good one. And uh, as for around the chest, I do like it to have a little bit of coverage just because I've got pit pierce nipples. Um, so okay. uh, so you don't want the, the front uh, strap to, you know, be brushing across your, your nipples. And so 
it's kind of nice when it just kind of sits still on your front. But I mean, if the nips show, I mean, then they show. <laughs> Most of the time, it's a losing battle for me, anyways. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I. It's amazing in the last what five six years the explosion of singlets that have come on the market, and every time you turn around, there's a new one. Here's another one. Uh, it's like, oh my god, there's so many I want. Oh my god. I can't afford all these singlets. And then when you mix in skin fit, it's like, I definitely can't afford all the singlets in the world. Mm-hmm. Just can't do it. All sorts of crazy designs. There's been like a kink explosion these past few, this past decade, actually. There has. And I'm, I'm very happy for it because I've loved singlets for forever and spandex. But now it's like we're seeing a rebirth because the last time we had a real big explosion of spandex was in the 80s. And everyone wore it, no matter who you were. Mm-hmm. When it first came out, and now we're 40 years later, we're having another explosion of spandex. And I hope it stays around this time. I've got to say, I love that retro look. I try to sport it all the time. That retro look, oh my God, I have so, I've had so much spandex that oh, I wish I still had from the 80s. Oh my God. Because it was always bright. It was fun. It was bold colors. And of course, it never lasted long. And it was like, oh, I got to get rid of these now. Uh, but I think this one, I think people are actually having fun with it and mixing different things mm-hmm. together and making new classics, hopefully. Fingers mm-hmm. crossed. Of course, now you can take, you know, designs that you found on the internet, like big cat faces and put them just, just they blow do. them up and put them all across your front and yeah. back. Everything. I've seen singlets in everything. And now um, I was talking to someone about Yesterday, actually, about designing a singlet, I was like, I want something because with my drawing, I've been doing some prints, creating prints. And I'm like, I have this perfect giraffe print I want as something. I'm like, it would be a singlet because it's like pink and yellow. So it's like bright pink and bright yellow. And I'm like, this would be amazing as a singlet. Come on now. (laughs) The only issue is you got to get the fabric printed. And I'm just like, damn you money. So, yeah, I'm like the newer more printed ones because i think it's fun to have prints i wish more would do prints but and the new mesh one because when indian came out with uh i forget the name of it where either the front or back was solid mesh and the back had the little stripe i meant to get one of those and i totally forgot i was like damn it forgot the mesh singlet damn it i do have at least one mesh one from mr s there are tons out there and it's like what more can you do with the singlet and it's like watch out we'll show you because <laughs> somebody's coming i just saw the other day somebody else is coming out with one and i don't remember who it is mm-hmm. <sighs> i've got a buddy down in virginia beach who likes rubber singlets because he's really into that early 1900s uh strongman look so he'll put on like a uh, big mustache and then wear a rubber singlet to go along with it i haven't gotten into rubber yet because that's just a whole different kettle of fish and you have to really take care of that because it costs mm-hmm. a fortune it does and but there's ways you can uh <laughs> that people will be glad to help you out there's more than enough help on the internet to help out oh to yeah rubber. oh that's for sure so are there any singlets out there you want right mm-hmm. <clears throat> i i'm already thinking about my next skin fit order um, oh yeah also, you know, just something um, for around the house, you know, like maybe just like a nice heather gray pattern singlet as well, just to wear around the house. Um, maybe not necessarily spandex, just comfy and, you know, kind of like my version of sweatpants. <laughs> Definitely. So you wear your singlets like around the house or oh, yeah. where do you wear the, Where do you wear them most? Where do you wear them most? Um, I mean, either the gym or the house. Sometimes you'll see me in my tights uh, out at the grocery store because, you know, it's on the way home or something like that as well. Nice. It's like, what's what's the point of going home, changing, and then, you know, going back out and grocery shopping? It's just like you're on the way home, you know, grab, grab some things. I mean, and I mean... I'm, I, I'm an exhibitionist. I like showing off. And oftentimes I get a lot of really positive comments about my uh, my choice of wear. So well, you do look very good in it, I will mm-hmm. say. I will wear a shirt along with it as well. <laughs> well, you know, I wore a singlet to a bar a long time ago and learned that it wasn't a, like a leather gear bar. It was just a regular bar. And then it's like, I did not think about going to the bathroom in this thing. 
Mm. That it's like in a leather bar or somewhere like that. It's easy because if you take the singlet down, people are like, "Ooh, what are you doing?" Hey, <laughs> like just like another bar, they're like, "What are you doing?" It's like, uh, I was like, make mental note only wear to like a leather or gear bar. Although I've almost forgotten what a bar is in these times. Well, exactly, and all of ours have closed, so it's like. Mm-hmm. Like our right. eagle here closed. They're supposed to move when everything reopens, but I'm just right. like, mm. yeah, our DC eagle has closed, closed, unfortunately. Um, I, Heard I that. Hope to, yeah, I hope to see it open again at some point in the future. But I mean, that's that's my bar. And yeah, just really- ours eagle closed, but there's there, we're moving, and I'm like, I hope you do move because your parking sucked. And I like going, but I hated the parking because you had to park on the street and find a spot. And it was a nightmare. And I'm like, just find somewhere with better parking. So all I ask. Obviously, since you're on the Instagram with spandex and underwear, do your friends and stuff know about your love of underwear and spandex? Um, I don't think it's a secret. Um, I'm pretty out there. Uh, as far as uh, as far as my interests, I would say. Um, in fact, <laughs> in many cases, cases my friends try to exploit that and try to get me out there in my spandex or my underwear. Um, Not a bad I, thing. Yeah, whether it's you know at, at bar nights or um, or parties or sometimes even on prominent stages in D.C. because I am a singer and I do perform professionally. Sometimes my organizations for which I perform put me on stage in some scantily clad wear. So <laughs> um, I would say people know about it. <laughs> well, that definitely sounds like they know about it and <laughs> approve of it. So I don't think we have to worry about people saying, oh, no, don't wear that. There probably sounds like the opposite. Here, go wear this. Go do this. Here you go. Those are good friends to have. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Love it when your friends make you strip on stage in front of thousands of people. <laughs> there are worse things in life. I would say so. Um, some people listening go, oh, my God, that's a horror story. But, you know, it just depends on who you are. Some people, that's a horror. And other, it's like, don't tempt me. So we think at our blog and podcast that underwear and gear in general Increase your confidence. Has there been a time when you've worn underwear specifically to boost your confidence or any type of gear to boost? That's a real chicken or the egg question for me. Um, Am I confident because I wear underwear or do I wear the underwear because I'm confident? Um, Well, regardless of what the answer might be, I know um, I definitely feel a sort of perk in my step when I'm ever, mm-hmm. whenever I'm wearing some, something particularly sexy or fun under my clothes. Um, it's, it's just a lot of fun just to, just to be sort of like covertly kinky. Yes. Yes. I would agree because when I had to wear, worked at a bank and I had to wear a tie every day, I always wore something extremely skimpy under the tie. Mm-hmm. So no one knew what I was like. And usually the tie and the underwear matched. So, which very few people saw that. There there were people who did see that, but very few saw that. But yes, I would wear that every day. And then underwear just makes you feel good. Because if you wear bad underwear, it puts you in a bad mood all day. You know what? This is true. So maybe the, um, maybe I am feeling more confident because of my choice of undergarments. Because if you wear bad underwear, I'm just like, Get this off me now. Well, that wraps up all our questions. I'm definitely going to have you on our spandex show when we do it, because I want to do a show about spandex. And there's so many good spandex guys out there right now who love it. And I want to have a longer discussion on spandex and what's popular now, where it's going, what we want to see, all that. So look forward to that soon. It's in the planning stages because, you know, I just love talking singlets. As you couldn't tell this podcast um yeah so that wraps up our questions thank you for coming on the show where can people find you on social media you can find me on instagram at muscle dog slayer or even on twitter at muscle bard go follow him i discovered him on i think instagram first and i've drawn him several times if you view and beat him site you'll see I hope to draw him many more times in the future because it's a lot of fun. I think my favorite one so far has been the one of you in the stall of the bathroom. In the Target bathroom. (laughs) In the Bikinis Target. Wow. (laughs) 
in the in the brief and that was my favorite one to draw so far and then i have one of you in purple i think i have another one i haven't put out yet i don't remember but there's more i want to draw of him so stick tuned and we'll talk in a second about more. Far away. um so yeah go follow him he's got amazing pictures a lot of fun and as you can tell he's an awesome guy so what's not to like you can go follow go people you know where to follow us. I'm UNB Tim. You can see my drawings. Uh, UNB blog on all the socials. And UNB blog.com to read our blog, which has got a new look. Go check it out. And yeah, so that's it. Thank you again, Brad. My pleasure. And we'll talk. We'll be back with you in another episode soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.